Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL session with Learn at NoStar. In today's session, we are going to take a look at a scenario in which we are going to identify the bi-weekly Fridays in a calendar year. These bi-weekly Fridays are also the paydays for many organizations. So we are going to write a SQL query and identify these paydays that occur in a particular year. So let's get started. So the first step for us is to write a SQL query to identify whether the weekday is a Friday or not. So for that we are going to make use of two date functions. The first function is the date name function uh, and we just need to pass the weekday as an interval and a source input date. So we are going to pass 4th of December as a date which was an actual Friday. And then another function we are going to try is the date part function. And then we are going to pass similar parameters to this function as well. And 2020, 12, 04. And then we are just going to execute this. And the output from this query we can see is the first output is Friday, which is the name of the weekday, and it is output from the date name function. And the second output is the number six, which is the output from the date part function. So every Friday would be numbered as six. So Sunday would be one, Monday would be two, and so on. You will have numbers one to seven for each day of the week. So now we know that Friday it has a number called six. Now the next step now for us is to identify the first Friday from a calendar year. So uh, let's take the calendar year as 2022 and then try to identify the first Friday from that calendar year. So we would be writing a query which would be something like select and then uh, because every Friday has got a number of six so if it is any other day, let's say the day is Sunday. So the Sunday would be having the number as one. Weekday number for Sunday would be one. To come to the Friday for that week, we need to add five to that, which is basically going to be six minus one. So six minus the weekday number of that day that we are passing to our query. So we are going to frame a query or frame a calculation that would take into account all this that we just discussed. So for that we need to use a date add function. So for adding the um, constant number of days or subtracting a constant number of days from a particular static date, we have a function which is called the date add function. So we're going to make use of that function now. So let's, let's make use of that function, select date add and we have to add in days. So that is the interval that we are going to define, which is going to be day. And then we have to define how much we are going to add. So for us, it is going to be six minus the weekday number of the date that we're going to pass to this. So it would be for the number, we can use the same function that we wrote above, that is date part. All right, so this is going to be six minus date part weekday of the date of the first day of that calendar year, which is going to be 0101. And let's make it 2022. So we are going to add these many days to a particular date. And we have to specify that date, which is again going to be 2022-0101. So this is what we are going to do. We have to close the brackets. And if we just run this query, we would have got a result. Now, if you take a look at this result, you would see that what has happened is that your output is 31st December of the previous year. But we do not want the previous Friday. What we want is the next Friday or the first Friday of the current year. So this has happened. Now, if I change it to, let's say, if I change it to 2020 instead of 22, this would not happen. This would give the correct output. So if I run this query right now, 
you would see the output is 3rd of January, which was actually a Friday. So if I go to the calendar and go to, let's say, sorry, January, 3rd was actually the first Friday of this year. But when I did this for 2022, then I got an incorrect answer. And that happened because, if I go back to 22, because the first of January 2022 is a Saturday and it is Saturday has got a number of seven. All right. So when I write this query, it becomes six minus seven, which becomes minus one. So it actually subtracts one day from the date that I have just passed and it gives me the previous date. So to fix that, what we need to do is we need to create a case statement. which would check basically your day of the week. So you have to create a case statement saying case when your date part of weekday is greater than 6 then you have to give another query, which we'll just write. Else we can stick with the same query. So we can have the same query over here. And now for all the weekdays for which it is greater than six, we actually want to add furthermore seven days to whatever date it just calculated for 2022 so what we're going to do here now is we are just going to we're just going to put another date add function or we can just add it to the same date add so six minus whatever comes out of this and we are going to add seven to it all right and let's just put a bracket over here and maybe another bracket over here. And this would give us the correct result. All right. Now, for now, these are static values. So basically, it will just go to the correct loop. Uh, when we have this as a variable, then this case condition would correctly identify the first day of the calendar year. And according to the weekday number of that first day of the year, it would correctly go to the correct part of this case scenario and execute. So if we just end it and I just run it once again. We can see that now it has given us the correct date as 7-1-2022 as a first Friday of that calendar year. All right. So this ends our step one where we have been able to identify the first Friday of the calendar year. Now let's say what we want to actually achieve is first identify the first Friday of that calendar year and then identify every bi-weekly Friday occurring after that first Friday of the year. Now, in actual scenarios, your requirement may be something like this, that you do not want to identify the first Friday of that year, but you want to identify the second Friday uh, of that calendar year in January. And then you want to keep on adding 14 days to it to come to every other bi-weekly Friday. But for our example, we are just considering the first Friday. If you want to achieve that, then you can just add seven more days to all these both of these calculations and you would get the correct result. All right, so moving on to the next part, now that we have identified the first Friday of the calendar year, what we want to do next is we want to keep on adding 14 days because if we add 14 days to this date that we have just got as an output of this uh, SQL that we just wrote, whatever we would get, would be every bi-weekly Friday and that is what we want to do. Now it would be kind of a loop and we want that loop to end as soon as the year ends. So because that is our upper limit. So now how to create this loop in SQL Server. So that is what we are going to see now. To see how we can create a loop, 
there are again different methods that we can do we can just create some temporary CD tables and create some row numbers and then use those row numbers the approach that we are going to take here is uh, using a table that is already present in SQL Server, it's a kind of a system table and it's called SPT underscore values. So that is a table that we're going to use. And it is uh, just to get an example of how that uh, table works is we are going to see select, let's say star from master dot dot SPT. So you can see, you can see there's one table being suggested over here which is the one that we're going to use spt underscore values all right and okay just run let's just run execute this query and see what we have got so we have got some table which has got some data in it and now you can see that this table has got something called so a column called number now this number column actually what is this number column contains continuous numbers from 1 to 2047 2047 so if you ever want to use a continuous series of numbers and your maximum limit is less than 2047 then you can make use of this table to generate that loop of numbers or list of numbers now another thing that we want to make sure is that here the types we have to put a filter to get the continuous values we have to put a filter on where type is equal to p all right so now if you run this query you will get a continuous number range from starting from zero going to uh, 2047 all right so this serves the purpose for us in a way because we wanted a list of values a list of uh, numbers which would help us to identify how many times we want to keep on adding the 14 days to our Fridays the first Friday that we have just identified in the query above so now the next step since we have already we have already seen how we can be using this table the next step for us is going to be to write a query where we are going to add that number keep on adding the 14 numbers these many number of times to our first Friday of the year all right now um, you may be having some way wherein you are passing a parameter to your sql query or it might be static and you might be hard coding the first friday but for our example we are going to declare a variable in which we are going to store the result of the query that we have written over here as the first friday of that year so to declare a variable we just need to write declare and we need to declare the variable name and the variable and the data type of the variable so for us it is going to be a date column and then we are going to define what we want to store in date so we want to show the output of this command that we have just written we do not need to put the select statement we can just put the calculation of the functions that we applied so select ff date and then we are going to just write down the case statement we are just going to copy that statement and put it over here and the other thing that we need to do is place an add over here to identify that this is a variable that we have declared now we are going to write our actual query in which we are again going to select from this table spt values which is a system table but we are going to now frame a query to select the right dates for us using the list of values in this table so what we are going to use now is a function called date add and we are going to add again days and we are going to add the day to this first friday of the calendar year that we just generated so we are just going to add it to this variable that we just declared and how many days are we going to add that is the value that we're going to pick from this spt underscore values table so we are going to add 14 days so multiples of 14 days that is what we are going to add so we are going to keep on adding multiples of 14 days so okay so this that would be your second parameter actually so that number that we're going to add comes in this number column so we are going to put number over here all right and we 
let's just remove the last comma and this would be our as bi-weekly Friday bi-weekly Friday from this table okay and now we are going to add some where conditions to this query to make sure that the numbers that we're going to add over here are multiples of 14 all right so to make sure that this number is a multiple of 14 we are just going to uh, divide this by 14 and see that this is equal to 0 and now we want to add another where condition because we want the number that is calculated uh, by using this formula as the bi-weekly Friday we want to stop that loop as soon as the year ends so we want this date to be present in the current year only and not in the next year so what we can write for that is we can uh, copy this whole function that we just created over here and we can simply say less than the first day of the next year or maybe you can just extract the year and make sure that the um, year lies in the same year as your present year okay so maybe we can just say or let's just say year of this is equal to uh, 20 22 for us right so now we have this query created and if we execute this query so we have to execute starting from the declare section because we want to make use of the results of this variable that we defined and if we execute this query okay that is because we have to put an equal to over here all right and then okay now we have also missed typing the type so that would make sure that we have a contiguous variable list as number list so type is equal to p and number divided by 14 is remainder is 0 now if we execute this whole query you will see that we have got fridays which are bi-weekly fridays so we have got the 7th of january of 2022 as the first friday then we've got the 21st which is 14 more days added to it and if we go at the very last record we would see that it gives us the last friday of that year and it doesn't go over to the next year because we have put this condition to check that so this is how we can obtain the bi-weekly fridays in a calendar year and we can start it from the first friday of the year or we can Start it from the second Friday of the year. So, if you want to start it from the second Friday of the year, let's um, make some change to this. So, here instead of plus 7, it should be plus 14. And here, actually, we should be adding 7 more days to it. So, if we 6 minus this thing plus 7. Okay, let's run this query now and see if we, it starts from the second Friday of the year. So if we run here, we would see it starts from second Friday, it starts from the 14th and yeah, it ends on the 30th of that year, which is well within that year and it doesn't cross over to the next year. So this is how you can identify the bi-weekly Fridays in an year and bi-weekly paydays in an year. Um, of course, there are other ways in which we can do the same thing, achieve the same results and we can bypass this table and uh, instead create a CTE table with a continuous list of values or numbers that we can use and multiply it that number of times to the first Friday that we derived. If you do not need this logic, maybe you can just input the first Friday of the year or the second Friday of the year from wherever you need to start. So you can input your uh, date start range and date end range and you can then um, easily achieve your results using this query. So I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye.